Uh, good morning, everybody. It's Monday, uh, mid-November. And I'm putting this video on just on record as well as uh, a general warning out there. We're in an extreme psychic weather event now. A massive coronzonic supercell of Renfielding and pathological canarying. Now, and it might not necessarily be a bad thing. It could be a good thing, but this will be a long video, so I'll try and go all over all the possibilities of what we're dealing with. Uh, the uh, You probably don't need me to tell you that when you were going to work this morning or whatever, going about your business this morning, there were nut jobs everywhere that people were losing their temper, flaring up. You probably, people you probably haven't had heard from in ages who don't like you probably contacted you or you don't like them, probably contacted you just to annoy you. This is, I've, I have not seen a coronzonic supercell of this magnitude since late 2018 and going into spring, early summer 2019. And prior to that one, it was the, the, the days leading up to the 2012 hoax. And before that, around late 2008. But this, I think, has is bigger than all of them. This is the one. Because I have a big enough following now and enough people listening to me uh, aware that I'm not talking bollocks when I bring this stuff out to recognize that this is something they need to pay careful attention of and make sure to be proactive in protecting your own safety regarding this, this stuff. Now, how I measure the psychic weather as I've always been telling you, is I look for behavioral traits in disturbed or damaged people. When disturbed or damaged people flare up in a particular group type way, usually through things like a smear campaign, through generally whipping each other up into a frenzy, uh, in a very pathological, dark sense that you're like, oh, I don't want to be part of that. If you do want to be part of it, you're probably pathological yourself. But um, personality disorder types. Now, before someone accuses me of being, having an issue with people with mental problems, let me explain something to you very carefully. There are two types of people that have issues regarding their consciousness and its behavior in this world and just like among the sane world the sane society there are ones with good hearts and there are ones with poisonous toxic hearts generally the ones with good hearts are very compassionate people they have problems they're dealing with a personality disorder that could be a result of things that are often no fault of their own if those people go malignant, it's generally through something like they've been abused or heavy use of cannabis. It, they are, those people in another time and another society would probably be our shamans and mystics. But we live in a world today where as soon as these people are identified at a young age, they're either medicated or told that they're the wrong gender and castrated. Unfortunately, that's what happens to them. So that's there are people out there who are not well, who are actually our, 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 our emerging mystics who are being destroyed by society. It's just like a Carl Jung said, or I think it was Nietzsche, I think it was Carl Jung, that the, the mystic swims in the water, the madman, the mad, the insane drowning. And that's not, generally sometimes not their own fault. In many cases today with the AMA, the American Psychiatric Association and groups like that, they, they destroy decent people who have problems or are going through a difficult time especially as children. And then there's the other side. There's people who are mad and evil. And they're always possessed by demons. There's always an entity. Now, don't feel that every one of these has a big spoke entity that just lives inside each person individually. These, these people, the entity will jump from insane person to insane person in order to infect them to get at someone else. So therefore, if you've ever been a case where you've 
Say you've had an issue with someone in work or a person that you lived in your neighborhood. And I've talked about this reason with the guy who keeps recurring in town or wherever when you, when you don't like actually want them. Uh, the, um, the entity is jumping into them to try and ambush you. And then if you dismiss that person from your life, the, the entity will wait until someone in your social circle or in your proximity is unhinged and they will jump in there. But the thing is that this doesn't happen to decent people who are not well. It happens, they are, they're only interested in evil people. I mean, it, it, there's a reason for this. Now, always remember that there are people out there who are not well, who are decent, compassionate people. And there are people out there who are not well, who are pure evil. And the pure evil ones right now are firing like a motherfucker. Now, this, as I've been telling you for years, like you, you go back through all my videos and they're filled with comments now. Thomas, you called this one four years ago. Thomas, you nailed 2020 and what's going to happen perfectly. Thomas, you must be a prophet. You must be a seer. You must have a visionary. No, I'm none of those things. I've been using the psychic weather very carefully and methodically since 2008, collecting data. And I've noticed that these flare ups usually happen in the microsphere in your neighborhood around you. And they're a reflection of extreme disturbance at the macrosphere. For instance, that's where the term Renfielding comes from. Renfield was a character in, in Dracula who was in a madhouse who ate bugs, ironically, and was preparing the way for the arrival of Count Dracula because his low psychic firewall was able to not, not only detect the arrival of Count Dracula, but also to work with him. So think of this, think of Renfields right now, dark ones. The other people in the madhouse and Bram Stoker's Dracula were all flaring up as well, knowing Dracula was coming, but they were trying to warn us. They were trying to warn us of the danger that was coming from a greater external evil. So always remember that. Always have compassion for people who have issues and problems but if their heart is good, their heart is good. But the remember, there's ones who are evil. Don't have compassion for them. Just get fucking rid of them. Just, you know, they're they're very easily detectable online. They run smear campaigns or they start smear campaigns. They have the most outrageous lies in them. And uh, you to even have these people in your proximity to even read their their emails, you're in danger. To even read, acknowledge them, you must immediately block these people. If they call you, block their phone numbers. If they are in your neighborhood, ignore them. If they try to stalk up the street and walk next to you, walk away from them. If they're trying, they're, the, the ones who are possessed by entities are forever trying to cause turmoil around your life. They're the ones who will go to your boss and tell a lie about you. You have, you cannot... You might say to yourself, well, this person's not well, they might... No, they will never get better. Because a, per a person who's personality disordered and has a compassionate, empathic nature would never run, implement, or take part in this mirror campaign. They'd be more like, I don't like this, I'm going away. Because they're definitely in some ways more psychically attuned than straight... Than, and especially like people who have certain levels of autism. If, they, if they're they involved in that stuff and seem to like need it for somehow, they're desperate for it. You're dealing with someone who's not only disordered, but extremely evil. Extremely evil. And even to have such people just in your periphery is putting you in extreme danger on every kind of level. Not just spiritual, and that's a real risk, but also um, you'll often have nightmares about them. And they're often killing you in their nightmares and things like this. Not only that, but also they can damage your reputation, your business. You can, they can cause problems for you in your social life. You have got to build a wall between you and them instantaneously as soon as this coronzonic uh, behavior manifests and, and do it for all eternity. You can't, there's, no, there's no coming back. You can't come back. You can be compassionate and empathic all your life, but it's not coming back. You, that that person, you know, where if you have someone who's a good heart and is losing, and they're, they're disturbed and having the crying and weeping and having a breakdown, 
they will never attack someone else. They will never attack someone else. The entity within the the Quran, the Quran Zonok disturbed, it has to. It's going to war against an an individual that it deems is a danger to its own existence. So it plays on things like insecurity, jealousy, paranoia. It's very strong to the cannabis. Now I know lots of you out there saying, "Why well, have you got a problem with cannabis smokers?" I don't have a problem with cannabis. It's your own fucking business. What I have a problem with is people who are not well living on a 24 hours a day and all day long. That's the problem. It'd be like me walking around a pint of beer in my hand all day, even though I don't really drink anymore. But they get the same thing. That's the issue I have. And people who are just like people who have emotional and psychological issues shouldn't be drinking lots of alcohol. The same with the ones who with the cannabis. So that's the issue there. But it can lead to horrific psychosis and in a, extremely... And also these entities with inside uh, these infected are obsessed with uh, with cannabis. They they will they they will they 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 crave it. It's the weirdest thing, or heavy big cigars or lo- or hard liquor, but usually cannabis, uh, because they can do things like drive and that kind of thing without getting into trouble. But um, so you have to be careful with all that stuff. Alcohol, right now especially with alcohol, cannabis. Uh, if you're on cocaine, it's very dangerous. You know, anything that's like changes your personality. Heroin doesn't change your personality, and you know, sh- mushrooms don't change your personality. But the, but the, the, uh, things like uh, cocaine, hard liquor, uh, but even loads of beer can be really fucking dangerous. And a lot of people, we ta- I, I bet lots of you who are drinkers, casual drinkers like myself, who've drank alcohol in the last month or so, and it's had a shitty effect on you. That's also part of what's going on right now. Psychic shields the fuck up. Now, uh, when I when I talk about Quranzon, I've made many videos on this. Some of them are quite legendary. But the Quranzon is an entity who, to even mention its name, is dangerous. I'm pretty safe from it now. And I torment it by putting up memes and stuff to like beckon it out of the shadows. And anyone who's Quranzonically infected, I often play damaged or, uh, you know, affected by them in order to coax the entity out further so that the, indiv- the infected individual will expose themselves to more towards everyone around them. And people are going, I don't want this fucker, any- this fucking lunatic anywhere near me. But uh, that should be our attitude to this though. I don't want this fucking thing anywhere near me. Not even in, not even in my consciousness. And uh, they're like canaries in the coal mine that smell the gas before the explosion. You know, that's what they're like. Uh, this is why they serve a purpose in society. This is why humanity has created them. You know, this is why the humanity has created these, these, these psychotic Renfields who run smear campaigns, make up staggering liars, uh, have hi- histories of mental illness and uh, substance abuse. And they uh, and in, and in females they manifest very strongly with women with fibroids. Now don't lose your fucking mind here, and say that I, I've had a fibroid. Are you calling me evil? No, but I'm saying there seems to be a, f- a fibroid component to this kind of infective behaviour within women, and within men it's the gallbladder. Now the gallbladder, if there's it, it is uh, where do you think terms coming? He's full of bile. He's full of spite. It seems to be that these entities in men nest in the gallbladder and in women, uh, n- now I'm not saying uh, this, uh, uh, gallstones, you know, not gallstones, the actual gallbladder. And, you know, so it affects digestion and things like that. Gallstones are impurities in food. That's just a normal thing. But a gall, a gall, gall, gallbladder flare-ups and pains and the, Production, overproduction of bile. That's why do you think they call it? A, uh, he's full of bile. You know, he's got some gall. You know, uh, it's the same thing. That's where that comes from. In males and females, it's hysteria. Uh, hysteria of the reproductive organs. The hysteria is often caused by a a behavior within this female that leads to the manifestation of a. A, a fibroid on the ovaries or on the fallopian tubes, which and this it's like literally all bitterness and anger and self doubt and insecurity n- builds a home for a demon on their on on their fibroids with fight with a fibroid, and some of these more psycho 
d- demented pathological females treat their fucking fibroid like it's their more, 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 more affection and kindness than their own uh, child, the Munchausen types. They, they actually talk about, I had a fibroid, oh, I had a fibroid. How's your son doing? Oh, oh, not sad, but a fibroid. It, 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 you can always tell them. Jesus Christ. And uh, so I am not a seer. I am not a prophet. I have hit all these home runs for no other reason than I made observations. I'm very, very good at observations and taking notes. And that comes from like me being a writer and being an artist. I, I, I have, you know, you notice things, you write them down. You see them, you, you you catalog them. And after a while, you start to realize there's actually traits to these kind of behaviors. There's actually timelines. There's actually, you know, cyclical aspects to them. And they actually, there's this cause and effect. That that's where the term psychic weather came from, because I was actually using these types to gauge the psychic weather in a new job I went into, in a new place, a new social circle I went into. Uh, to in my neighborhood around people I deal with online and I can t- I can absolutely tell you it was it's been wonderful absolutely beautiful because it's actually caused saved me a lot of trouble and a lot of pain and a lot of you who have been in the tribes already have this you already have it I'm just sort of like I'm kind of just formulating it and kind of making a science of it if you want to call that but you know that that's that's you know I'm sure many of you have that gut feeling you know and you you know and you're noticing things as well and you've always been like that it's just that i through the internet i've been allowed to sort of like stitch it all together into a concept and uh, put a kind of an element of quantitative and qualitative uh phenomena within that and actually be useful and that is observing the psychic weather and seeing where we're going now i have as i said this would be comparable to the the Koranzonic, you know, it's they're like the Koranzonic types are like, say, say if one of them goes into a state of hysteria, and starts a, a smear campaign, it's like they've been hit. They're they're like a snooker ball, that's been or a, or a pool ball that's been hit on the table and it flies off after being hit by the cue, and knocks off the other ones. Well, the balls they they hit against and move off in their direction are usually they 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 they're, they're as infected as they are. So it's, they only touch the infected, where anyone else who's normal and not disordered that comes across this behavior goes, I'm not getting involved in this shit. I'm staying out of it. You see, this is a great this is a great insight to you as a person. You want to talk about a spiritual a way of spiritually progressing. Is that when you see somebody shit or someone else starting shit somewhere else, and you go, if you join in without knowing the full facts or just because you think I'm a mate and I have to do it, like, you know, the way gangs beat up, beat up someone else because the gang wants it, eventually the gang will turn on you. But it's also the one who goes, I'm, I'm not getting involved in this shit. That's, that's actually an extremely spiritual thing. I'm not feeding this crap. I'm staying well out of this. That's as, that's, as, that's as about as spiritual as it gets in terms of your spiritual development because you're you're not jumping into a black magic circle. You're going, you're protecting your your, your magic circle and your psychic circle by saying, no, no, not, not this fucking time. Now, that's the description of what the psychic weather is. And now here is the psychic weather, what's happening right now. Absolute fucking bedlam. I can't believe what I'm seeing online. Every every evil nut job is on a fucking crusade, and it's, and the streets are full of these people. The roads are full of these people, and everyone is. Co- I got so many. I got so many messages this weekend from manic, hysteric, hyster- hysterical people. Now, not necessarily bad doing bad things, but just these manic strings of incoherent, waffling messages. And not just from one or two people, like nine or ten, just waffle than the classic Koranzonic babble, 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 babble. You know, geez, and it's it, nothing. Nothing is said as one single mind. You know, it's either you know, you know, it's it's babble, 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 babble. A paragraph after paragraph, sentence after sentence to say something like, you know, I'm cold today. Babble, babble, and it's and then all sending me irrelevant hundreds of gifts and images, just manic, unhinged behavior 
I have never seen in this, I've got, you know, I get it all the time in isolated form, but Jesus Christ, it started on, it started like last week, I don't know, midweek, it started trickling, like, I'll keep an eye on this shit, but fuck me, by last night, it was like Niagara Falls of the psychotic, Jesus Christ, I've never seen anything like it. And 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 I know I've compared it to the previous ones of late twenty eighteen into so early summer twenty nineteen, uh twenty twelve build up and then the the classic uh, two thousand and eight one. This soup this this fucking surpasses all of these. This is in a league of pathological Renfielding, and uh, Coronzonic supercell the likes I've never seen in my life. Now what's going on? Well, obviously something a big, something fucking gigantic is about to come down. Absolutely. And it's going to happen on the global stage. What it is, I don't know. Is it a bad thing? It could be a good thing. I don't know. But I'll tell you something. I'm also monitoring the psychic weather as a whole. Now, I'm not saying any specific thing is coming. Remember that. What I'm saying is some shit is going down. That will come in time and not that far down the road. Is it okay? I'll give you something I saw last week that absolutely set off my fucking radar big time on the global stage. There is a video of the leader of China dressing down Justin Trudeau on camera, and it's deliberately done and filmed on camera in order to create a public humiliation of of Trudeau but also the Chinese premier, premier I can't remember that low life's name but um he was genuinely angered and disturbed it wasn't like I'm again he there was there was visceral anger there and I also saw a video recently of the meeting of the Chinese General Communist Party where people were delegates were being led out including an old man who practically begged the Chinese premier for his own life and he goes this this kind of thing to him. Now, what what was done to Trudeau is there's we're being told by this behavior that something really bad is probably troubling the globalists. I don't know what it is. Maybe they they they've realized they backed all the wrong horses with that, that coked up psych, coked up psychotic Zelensky in Ukraine. I don't know. Uh, but it that was you know what that reminded me of you know what that the globalists are right like they're right they're like right now do you ever see the movie Goodfellas do you remember when Jim Jimmy Conway and uh, Henry Hill and uh, Tommy Simone played by uh, Joe Pesci Conway was played by Robert De Niro and uh, Henry Hill was played by that uh, very good actor he died recently. But anyway, in, what happened was, and it happened in the real story in real life, after the Lufthansa raid, uh, Conway, the real guy, I think his name, his name was Gillespie, I think, he got, he got, uh, he got uh, really paranoid and he thought everyone was talking to the feds. Uh, and so he started killing, killing all his friends to help them. And knew, anyone who knew about the raid, he had Tommy Simone go around and murder them. And uh, so, like, people who were, who were is that that classic panic that they're on to us and that's exactly what i saw when the chinese premier dissed justin trudeau it was and justin trudeau walked away like a frightened like a little boy who'd been scolded in school now there's something going on there at the top they're worried about something they've lost control now don't be buying into the stuff that they've been showing us at the the, the cop you see what they do, things like davos and the the COP20, whatever the thing is called, the climate change thing, they've only shown the world how psychotic they are. And there seems to be a big mirroring, a big sort of light, Luciferian light being shown on the evil and the psychosis right now. I'll give you an example. It, it's to, to me, you know, your man, Elon Musk, I don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy, but he's definitely, he knows how to work chaos magic. You know what I was saying earlier on? I, Whenever I'm being attacked by someone, I, I pretend it's true in order to bring the real evil to the surface. And it's also how you find out who your real friends are, who your real comrades are. Uh, and then I play along to like, oh, I'm, I'm, you've ruined me. Don't ruin me any further. And then what happens is the, the, you'll either see the animal, 
the uh, the sadistic animal inside there will be sexually turned on by it and uh, it'll be fired up and it will only get worse it'll only it'll only glory in, in a thing that it thinks you're you're down and uh, that's when normal people look at them and go that fucking cunt is deranged that fucking cunt is evil and so it's surrounded by other evil fucking cunts and lunatics and that's that's the purpose of doing that well well elon musk has done that with the uh with the twitter thing he has sent them all home for the weekend and it doesn't matter he's enough staff to run the thing it doesn't we're not, we don't, you don't need fifty thousand people uh the psychotics at home the psychotics will be going will will will, will quit and the people are like will work because they need to pay their bills will return or like their jobs and it's a and he doubled down on this with an insurance policy of giving trump back his uh his account and that way he's definitely assured that the lunatics are not coming back but that's what that that chaos jester craft has shone the light on all the nut jobs out there uh, all the crazies to reveal themselves and that's a classic uh that's a classic like chaos jester craft thing is to uh let let the light let them put, turn the spotlight on themselves you know they use the christian ter- thing by their fruit you shall know them and that's like what's well, a good christian parable thing but th- there's something going on with the globalists they're in they're up there's real i don't know if they're i, I won't say they're up shit creek but there's genuine paranoia terror and now they're, now there's sort of like a night an internal night of the long knives is going on and the first thing you saw of that was did the trust in trudeau take you know attack now uh or you know you know the dressing down but it was unbelievable when you watch it the camera was deliberately put there for that reason so it'd be fed out there like a warning like it's like getting bullets in the post or something from the mafia and uh or the kiss of death you know and and the way trudeau looked was reminded me of the the scene where that gangster was being led away in the godfather uh and he, he asked tom he says tom you know for old time's sake can you just let this pass and i've taken him off the swim at the fishes and he turns around and says uh tell michael i always liked him it, it was just business well that was exactly how justin trudeau behaved he he, he he walked away like he was a man who knew he had a target on his back and i think a lot of this there seems that's what so that the whatever the renfielding and the coronzonic supercells are happening right now it's a reflection of that there's something enormous now let's look on the positives and the good side they're all some big plan they had has felt the shit they can't do it and uh it's not working out for them now they put the now people sent me a video of some some indonesian politician bureaucrat or whatever standing on stage talking about we can have this vaccine passport that you can be an international travel document and uh, some of my friends were sending me this oh my god we're fucked and i looked into it that guy was just someone looking for the the globalists to pat him on the back and say aren't you wonderful he's like he reminded me of an art you know the indonesian politician reminded me of a classic irish politician that he all our every single aspect of irish politic political policy so um, they look to a globalist and go, didn't I do well? Didn't, did, didn't I do good? I did good, didn't I? I did, I, I did really good, didn't I? We let enough 60,000, 62,000 Ukrainians into Ireland. We had nowhere to house them. So we got rid of the Irish people to house them. Didn't, didn't, we, didn't I do good? That's what they're like, you know. <coughs> so I wouldn't worry about it. That's not been implemented. It's not kite flying either. So there, 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 there's, I, I, I saw a lot of glum faces on that cop stage. I saw a lot of glum faces at Davos. There's something going down and it doesn't look like it's good for them. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's good for us. It could be something like there's an asteroid coming or, uh, you know, I've been hearing stories about an extreme winter that would paralyze the West. Now, one of the reasons they and the, the, the Northern Hemisphere. Now, one of the reasons they don't want an extreme winter of cold is because an extreme winter of cold kills off viruses. Mm. You know, I talk to any farmer around here, he'll tell you the same thing. That we, you know, uh, the animals are not well, I'm not well. Let's hope we get a good frost. A good deep frost actually cleanses the world of viruses and bacteria. 
Uh, you know, people say, oh, freeze. Yeah, no, but it, by the time they come out, we've already got the immune system we're, we're against. So the worst, the best thing that they would want. Now, I'll be talking about this in the, the talk in December 5th in England. But the best that they would want would be a warm, mild, damp winter for spreading virus. If they found out it was suddenly going to, suddenly going to be a, a terrible, freezing, cold winter, that, that would upset them. That would upset them because that would throw, that would tear the arse out of that plan. Another thing too is that, um, or it could be something like, I don't know, you know, they they they're, they're, they're not, remember they're not afraid of us. Those of you say, oh, they 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 know the people. There's a mass awakening and the people they they'd kill us all first. Another one that's a possibility I could put out there is that they didn't expect the ping pong, the not the ping pong, the needle craft, to kill so many people with the suddenly and unexpectedly, and it's obviously. There's no people because of the because of the needle craft. I know people who are fanatically pro. You know inoculations and, all, you know VAC all their lives, and be the type to slag me off. You get a flu flu shot. I don't need that. Oh, you fucking you stupid. They're now skeptical not only of the, the Rona needle craft, but all needle crafts. Now that has been a massive own goal for them. They, I know you have Pfizer and Moderna now doing in test, in house tests on the rare side effects, dangerous side effects. You know, how can you actually? And then you say to people, "Well, there you go. The thing wasn't properly tested." And now they're going to me, "Jesus, you're right." Where like last year they would, ah, they wouldn't have released it. They wouldn't have put it out. It wasn't fully. It wasn't like ninety nine percent safe. And I said, "Well, even ninety nine percent safe is not good enough for me." Then when the same ones are gone, yeah, I saw that. She's a bit worrying. It could be that. It could be that. That that that, that. You see, their whole technocratic, uh, and it's turned out now. What I tell you, I was talking to a woman the other day, and she reckons that the actual, the needle craft percentage rates issued by governments, is way overblown, and how? And she gave me some interesting anecdotal evidence. She said that, when the needle craft pass for international travel was was common for all airlines and, and all european and most other countries almost no one was flying the planes were empty as soon as the needle craft passes were dropped for international travel she said the planes were all packed that tells you that the ones who weren't on the planes during the during the needle craft during the needle craft pass were not needle crafted and if you were to measure that against that metric, that would be a sizable member of the pop amount of population. And also, the only place left that you still need a needle craft pass to get into is the USA. And she said the flights between Ireland, I want to go with Ireland, I was in your country, the flights between Ireland and the USA, which is quite a lot, quite a lot of travel between Ireland and the USA, uh, is uh, the flights are, are, not, are all half empty. And they're nearly all Americans on them, old Americans on, and old people, you know, with the life, they'll be the first to roll the sleeves up. Uh, on their, you know, their final vacation before they die kind of thing. The Blue Rins people, as they call them. And uh, I thought that was very intriguing evidence, especially as some, I saw something this week that he said, in some parts of the USA, they think that only about 11% of the population took the needle craft. And it might even be lower than 10, way lower than 10% in eastern many parts of eastern europe so it hasn't so they may be lying they may be lying and not just lying a little bit but lying an enormous amount about the actual numbers that took the needle crown and that, and if that coupled with all their other plans have fallen apart not only would it throw them into 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 psychic turmoil at the top but it would also make them paranoid because if you these people are a criminal gang. Yeah, you have to remember that. What you get at Davos and and COP eighteen or COP twenty, whatever it's called, the climate changing, are the world's number one cr organized crime gangsters. That's what they are. They're the world's the globalists are the world's number one organized crime gang. Now I have you know if you're like me and you're a fan of gangster movies, you always know, I read read a lot of books on gangsters and stuff. You always note there's always the same thing. As soon as the scam starts to become problematic, 
they start killing each other. They start killing each other because they're afraid someone's going to go to the cops. And they may be at the top killing each other, metaphorically, but it might come to the real thing. Because one of them is probably thinking of going to the cops. They're afraid of someone. Now, what's really interesting is the blowing up of the pipeline. I don't know anyone who thinks, you know, the, the, the one that was off the coast of Denmark recently. I don't think there was anyone who believed that that, that was done by Russia. Not one person. Other than the, the moron of morons that you might meet. Everyone else accepts it was a it was a false flag. Now that's unprecedented. For the first time ever in history, the vast majority of the population went, "That was bullshit." That was, and then it happened again with the missile that was fired by Ukraine, that landed in Poland and killed two people. Zelensky immediately wanted to start World War Three, a nuclear war, but even the even the, the many of the even the gullible normies even turned around and said. Uh, that 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 was that wasn't Russian. Russia wouldn't do that. Russia don't know that's stupid. So that's two false flags in a row that the globalists have actually failed big time to pull off. Two, to the point where even Biden said almost immediately, "No, no, our intelligence says it was a Ukrainian missile." Now that looks like Zelensky was trying to start World War Three to try and keep his, his, his you know, you know, when you think of Zelensky, don't think of like some guy who's a great general like my, you know, like Napoleon fighting a war or, you know, Wellington or, you know, Eisenhower. Think of, you know, Tony Montana coked up out of his head in the, in, in, in the mansion with the tomb. Come on, see my little friend. And uh, to think of him that way, because that's what he is. And uh, these organized criminals are now, might be turning on each other. And that's not necessarily a great thing for us because that could cause a lot of trouble. They could start a war or something or start a, some wars. So, be, you know, but at the same time, too, it could be a great thing for us because it could be the collapse of globalization. But it could be also a collapse of globalization because they know something's coming to the environment, like a, 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 a very difficult winter or something like that. Or, you know, but it is it, it is what it is in terms of the fuckers rent fielding on the street. I've never seen anything like it. And it has to be towards something big. Now, I just gave the example of the globalist and a possible, like, you know, the good fellow type gang breakdown. It might not be that. I'm just throwing that out there. But it is, something's going to happen. It could be something else. But I, I, it's coming. Now, again, I've been telling you, this is the winter of all sorrows. Now, because of the... Uh, and here's another one for you. Because, the, the, you know, the ones with no immune systems from the, the Foghorn Leghorn, and boy, I say, boy, are going to be dropping dead when the first season of virus comes along. Unless we get a really cold winter and we don't have a proliferation of seasonal viruses that would normally kill them out. And uh, uh, from two things, one, when it's really bad and cold for a long time, people don't socialize, they stay home out of snow and ice. And two, and, they, and two, viruses don't like the cold weather. They don't spread. They don't, and so bacterial infections don't spread in, in icy cold weather, dry, icy cold weather. They like damp, humid, warm weather. They like a, an atmosphere that's like the, your breath, you know, like your breath, damp and warm. It's, you know, that, and when you have an atmosphere where it's just like your breath, but when you can see your breath in the cold winter, you know you're very safe from viruses. Uh, very safe because they're not able to get up to your mouth. And if that, if they were, if they were, you know, it's either two things to this either they're suddenly and unexpectedly is bothering them because they know it's a bad publicity thing, or two, they want to suddenly and expectedly, they want to kill everyone off. But it's not, and it, it had to happen this year for some reason. But it's not going to happen because perhaps a very deep cold winter. And therefore, they're not going to get the massive debts they wanted. And therefore, that gives more time for the, the conspiracy theorists to actually program people and, you know, to warn them of what's coming. You see, they're, they're in a ra it's obvious that they're in a race against the clock. I mean, it's almost like it's a ship that's sinking, but they haven't told most of the, the, uh, the passengers. And the, the captain and crew are like building life, are secretly launching lifeboats in the background or that kind of thing, or found an island to save to. And so some of you will come with us. 
but they haven't told them that the, the majority of the passengers that they're going to go down the ship. But there's something coming. You don't know. I mean, I'm sure you're going to fill the comments and saying I went to the shops this morning on my way to work, and it was like it was bedlam. Uh, it was nut. It was crazy over the weekend. Uh, you know, blah, blah, people I hadn't heard from in years who are absolute pieces of shit have suddenly manifested in my life. You watch, I bet you anything, you'll be filling the comments with this. This is a coronzonic supercell. This is extreme psychic weather. Now, what's the purpose of knowing this stuff? Well, I told you, it gets us ready for things in the future. So ultimately, using the psychic weather, just like the normal everyday weather, is a very positive thing. Because if you know a certain kind of weather has come along in terms of climatic weather, you can make yourself prepared for it. You can buy a new winter coat. You can upgrade your heating system. That kind of thing. You can buy a couple of hot water bottles. If you put it the psychic weather, it's the same way. If you know all the nut cases are all flaring up, you're getting yourself ready for something on the news that's coming that will take the majority of normies by surprise and shock. But it won't surprise and shock you. You've got, ah, so that's what it was. But you're already ready for it. You're already ahead of it. You're in the tribe. The tribe is on the tribe is on the forefront of human evolution. Uh, we're there. We're we're in we're we're at the, the we're at the fucking we're at the tip of the spear. Uh, you know, uh, we're there. And uh, and it's a lot of us because we've all of us, not just me, we've developed this awareness over the years of reading psychic weather. And um so that's 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 it. This is an extreme psychic weather alert indicating that something major is coming. What that major stuff is, I don't know. I've thrown out speculation. You can throw out your own. You, but we are now prepared for it. The ones who are the Coronazonic canaries, who you see acting pathologically online, trying to smart start smear campaigns, the ones who are in your neighborhood, that kind of thing, you block them and you never think of them ever again. You, you, or you prepare yourself, or you, you, you know, you, you know, you, you just know, nothing that has anything to do with them. You build a, a psychic and a physical and a spiritual wall against them, because they can. They're the ones who will cause you to panic and bring you down with them. Remember, they're all drowning men, and just they're all they're all trying to grab you and bring it to the bottom of the sea. So, and I felt all weekend. I was I was kind of a bit tense. I knew some shit was coming down. And then it, then it manifests, and it's like, oh, here we go, you know, right on cue, the mentally ill have arrived, and uh, the evil mentally ill have arrived, and uh, you, you know the drill, block and banish, that's it, and that, because if you're not, if you're not, if you're involved in that, you're not using your consciousness and your cognitive abilities, and your moxie and your skills in order to survive. If the news might be full of all kinds of hysteria, don't get obsessed at watching the news constantly. You know, this is another thing too. People, when you're, you know, it's one thing to have the indications of what's coming down the road. It's another thing to be glued to it. That's extremely unhealthy. So there's no point in having the TV going 24 hours like, oh, it's coming, here we go, here we go. You know, and, and, and being on you know, the news sites every, every time you're on your phone, stay away. Do you, this is, look, what's going to happen, people like me and you have no power to control it. We have the power to survive it because we have the skill sets and the ability to know that it's coming. In the meantime, like they say, it might never happen to us personally. Enjoy your life, go about creating, go about art, go about doing your things and surround yourself only with positive people. Surround yourself. Look, it's really easy, guys. There's two kinds of people in this world. There's people who elevate you emotionally and you feel better just being in their company. And the same with like watching people online. You watch some people online and say, oh, I like her. She's good. She makes me feel better. Oh, I like him. Oh, he's good. He, he, you know, he, he gives kind of dark news, but it's, I, I don't feel, I, mean, I, I feel a sense of calm around him. And then there's others who are like, you know, it's the end of the world. It's over. You're done. You're fully finished. You're done for. You know, this kind of thing. Do you need to get away from that? You need to fucking especially get away from those types because you don't need fear in a, in a, in a situation where you need your wits, where you need your sense of humor, where you need yeah, a sense of love and companionship and friendship, where you need to be in order for you 
to actually survive and to prosper and to grow because on the other side of all this shite is a second renaissance and this is often when this stuff goes down it's often a sign it's always a sign of fact where it's personal on the micro sphere or macro sphere that the good times are coming you can't grow a field of you can't grow a field of fruit or a field of roses without shit so without shit being flung on the field so uh, sanguine noses love you all and we'll be fine but in the meantime you you know who to banish take care